Hey, busy crafters. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're returning. My name is Jessica, and we have a great collaboration for you. It's the Merry Christmas Palooza, hosted by Indiani Jones. The link to her channel will be in the description box below, as well as the playlist. So be sure to go on over and give everybody some love. So now on to project number one. This project was a flop, and I'm only saying that because it did get scorched. I have other projects that did not get scorched. So what I did is I went to the Dollar Tree and I got those little glass cutting boards that were plain. You can go ahead and sublimate on these. Now I love to sublimate a lot and I know I've been doing it a lot lately and I probably will keep doing it. Um, some off camera, some on camera, who knows? Before I sublimate on anything, what I like to do is I like to wipe down the surface with some rubbing alcohol. And I took off the little feet to the cutting board because that's the side that we're going to use to sublimate on. One side is smooth, the other side has like a texture to it. So we're going to be doing it on the smooth side. Now I'm really scrubbing it down really, really well. So I go ahead and use the Oracle 651 vinyl. That vinyl you can go ahead and sublimate on. So that's why like I have different vinyls for different things, and this is for my sublimation. Um, yeah, so I just go ahead and cut out a little square that is going to go on there. Now, I am disappointed in this, and the only reason why I kept it in the video is to show you guys that crafting, sometimes it's a hit and miss. Sublimation, sometimes it's a hit and miss. The cup I did on the last video turned out absolutely amazing, and that's why I feel comfortable giving that cup away which will be coming up in Monday's video. So what I do is I take some um, Rapid Tack and I just spritz it down a little bit and peel off the vinyl. Now I always leave the vinyl just a little bit bigger than I actually need, but then I go ahead and squeegee it down. So of course the vinyl's going down, sticky side down onto the Rapid Tack. And then I just squeegee it all out. Now there was a little bit of imperfection right here Right there on top that I'm scrubbing off was an imperfection. And then I noticed that there was a little imperfection right there. So I'm like, oh. and I don't know how the sticky side got some like purple dye on it, but it is what it is. So I go ahead and try to clean it off as much as I possibly can. And then I just, you know, cut off the access or the excess or whatever, the extra vinyl around there. And we're just going to put that to the side. Now I printed that off on my Eco Tank my Epson Eco Tank 2800 and with this you don't have to mirror the image because it's going on glass so I just go ahead and take some heat resistant tape which ended up also burning because yeah I had the perfect temperature and then I forgot the perfect temperature or the perfect time I should say and messed up so yeah and here it is going on the, the heat press. Now, even though I had that Teflon thing on there, 190 seconds was way too long and I burned the image. I forgot how long I was supposed to put it on there and I went to another YouTube channel and they said 190 seconds. For me, it worked really well for him, but for me, that's not the case. And so my temperature dropped drastically right there at 327. It was supposed to be 385. I've learned the hard way and then I forgot to write it down. So I think what I have to do is just, you know, suck it up and buy the cookbook from Jennifer Maker, <laughs> the sublimation cookbook. Here what we're doing is after it completely dries, because that thing is extremely hot when it's uh, not dries, but when it completely cools down, because it is very, very hot, you just have to take a sponge and then just take off the excess paper. And I'm not going to make you guys watch me do that because that was excruciating because you can see the scorch marks. See right there? So, wait, it's it's not scorch marks, no. <laughs> yeah, I just distressed it. Yeah, that's that's what I did. It's it's distressed. That's, <laughs> are you guys buying it? I knew it. You didn't buy it. So, yeah, um, with, with sublimation, it gets very tricky at times. I'm gonna show you right here a couple of other ones that I've done that turned out perfect. You know, like that one. That one's actually quite quite funny. And then, you know, there's that one. This one right here, my son wants me to make him, but in a bigger one. <laughs> Many have eaten here, few have died. 
So there's the first project. Um, I'm not too happy with it, but fortunately I'm not going to be giving it away. I'm not going to be selling it because you really can't because it's distressed really bad. Yeah, that's what it is. No, I just scorched. So I'm just going to use it in my own kitchen around the holidays. Win-win, I guess, kind of. So now on to project number two. This one turned out absolutely adorable. And so I just take this coffee cup that I have. I have a ton of coffee cups, a ton of tumblers, everything like that. Um, and so, yeah, I just take that, put out the image, and tape it up really, really well. Here, I forgot to put a protective paper around it to protect the heat press. So that was my fault. Luckily, the, the press did not get damaged during the making of this cup. But a lot of people say, oh, you don't need that much tape. I feel more comfortable using a lot more tape, making sure that the image stays firm and down onto the surface. So I'm the one buying the tape, so it shouldn't really bother nobody else. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there, you know. So I go ahead and do this. Now, this one is also flawed. I'm not going to lie. Um, towards the handle area it gets kind of ghosting. And that's that's when the image is there, but it's not completely there, you know? So it's a little bit, it's a little bit flawed, but we're not perfect, you know? Jesus is the only one who's perfect. And other than where you hold the cup, the rest of the cup turned out absolutely beautiful. And I just go ahead and do tape around the top and the bottom because I don't want ghosting a lot, you know? The, and here I am saying, you know, a lot, <laughs> man. So I go ahead and I just continue doing that. Now where you hold the cup, you're not going to really see anybody, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of ghosting, but it's there and it's fine. I couldn't find the bigger mug press. So, cause I have little attachments and detachments and stuff like that. So I'm just showing you there. And so now here is the unveiling of this gorgeous, gorgeous mug. It turned out absolutely cute. And it's a little gingerbread man, and he's busting through the cup. So he actually kind of looks 3D a little bit. And yeah, he turned out beautiful. So I've shown my tumblers. I've shown this cup here. There's a little bit of ghosting in the back. Like you really can't tell, especially if you're holding it, it's fine. Um, so yeah, so there's that little cup. I do tumblers. I do, you know, cups. I have to practice with my 40 ounce tumblers because that's not going to fit in the press at all. I actually have to use oven, which I bought an oven for that. But if you guys are interested in them, just go ahead and email me and, you know, I can get, you know, make you something that you guys want. I want to take a moment to thank every single one of my subscribers. I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. You guys are so special to me. And this channel would not be where it's at if it wasn't for you guys. And I wouldn't be where it's, I'm at if it wasn't for you guys. On to project number three. So this one is also one that is a fail. Now, this is the first time that I'm using this material. I went on Amazon and I bought some pot holders and oven mitts. And they come in a, yeah, so you get an oven mitt and a, and a pot holder. This is the first time that I'm actually doing this one. And I had to look it up on, you know, the time and the temp. It turned out to be scorched too. And I only had it on the press for about 50 seconds at, I think, 275 yeah, I don't, I don't show the press. So I'm like, they're cute, but they got a little scorched. They're a little, you know, I don't know. This is the first time that I'm doing this. So this was just as much of a shock that it is to you guys that it is to me. Because I'm like, okay, let's try this one, you know. So I haven't, this is the first time, my, my first one. And it was a fail in my eyes. It was a fail. And it's on camera. <laughs> it's a good thing that it's just going to be decoration in the uh, the kitchen. I, I did all this stuff for decorations for my kitchen. Because I don't have a whole lot of gingerbread stuff. Because my kitchen is gingerbread. 
And so that's why I decided to do ginger right here. And then I did go back and print out, you know, something to match the pot holder for the top. And so here I am, the color happens to be really good. Like it transferred very well, but the edges of this pot holder and the mitt kind of got scorched just a little bit. Like you can see a little bit of like the browning on the edges. And then it was really, really flat. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you think about this. I think it's a fail. That is a gingerbread cookie recipe. And then of course the little gingerbread man and woman on top, the little gnomes. And then, you know, gingerbread kisses and gingerbread wishes and cocoa kisses. So go ahead and follow me on all of my social medias. The link to them will be in the description box below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing or subscribe. Yeah, just, just subscribe. <laughs> Don't consider it. Just do it. Anyways, on to project number four. Now, this is where we're getting into a little bit more of the cutesy stuff that, you know, I'm really proud of. So I took that um, little small cutting board that I got from the, the Hobby Lobby. I painted it with my apple barrel nutmeg brown along with those trees and that little box. I cut that image off from Cricut. And it says gingerbread forest with a little tree in there. I'm going to go ahead and put that hot glue down and in the box that I got from the Dollar Tree. And those little trees I got from Michael's uh, last year when they were 75% off. So it was like almost nothing that I had to pay for them. And then I just take my blue glue gun. That's got the cheaper glue in it that's very stringy that I really don't care about. And I just go ahead and put hot glue around like the frosting or the, I, the icing. Frosting, icing, it's all the same. And I do that with every single tree. And then here I was like trying to be smart and then the tree stuck to me and <laughs> it was a disaster. By the grace of God and only by the grace of God, I did not burn myself. So I go ahead and do that to all the trees. I don't make you uh, watch all the trees. That one worked out a little bit different, a little bit better. Then I just go ahead and do the same thing. I put the icing drippings down on the cut. Excuse me, I'm getting all choked up here. It was just so beautiful. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it turned out very cute. So I just go ahead and do that. And I put it down the sides of the box and everything like that. Make sure that the hot glue is dripping. And yeah, this, this glue is very, very stringy. And that's why I use it for like the icings and the snow and stuff like that. So now I go ahead and I take my Waverly chalk paint in white. And this is where we're going to start painting all of the hot glue. Because then it gives it a dimension of like there's a lot of icing on there. And yeah, it turned out very cute. This is one that I'm actually quite proud of. The first one and the third one, I was just like, oh man, it burnt. And then this one, I was like, okay. I'm feeling a little bit better. And then the last one, oh my goodness, guys, the last one. I think the last one is my favorite one. And then this is my second favorite one. Yeah. And of course, my third favorite one is, you know, the Breakthrough Gingerbread Man Cup. I'm just saying. So I go ahead and paint all of the hot glue. And then now I was like, oh, I got to cover that hole. Got a peppermint from Timu. And started gluing down the little trees. And they all fit. So that made me a little excited. Now I was thinking about maybe putting something in the bottom of it. Maybe I could put like cotton or um like cotton balls or whatever to make it look like snow. I don't know. Uh, this is a cookie. Like these are cookies. So who knows. So then I go ahead and do a peppermint on the top and then on the side of the box where the icing is kind of separated a little bit. And then... I also got those little gingerbread men from Timu as well. And I just go ahead and uh, place them around, you know, because they're kind of cute. Yeah. And then here is the final project or product. Let me know what you think about these, my little forest, my little gingerbread forest cookies. Now, me personally, I don't like to eat gingerbread cookies, except for my sister. She makes a good gingerbread cookie. They're soft, they're chewy, they're nice, okay? So they're really good. 
Okay, so now on to project number five. Now this one is also another one that I am quite proud of. Like I said before, it's nice. This one also took a very different turn. It was supposed to be similar to the fourth one, but this one I was like, now nah, we need to do something different because you know we just can't keep giving the people the same thing over and over again. So what did I do? Is I take that little shelf sitter from the Dollar Tree. I take all the goo gone and take off all the gooey McGoo goo. And <laughs> I'm in a weird mood guy today, guys. Happy sad, happy sad. No, I'm kidding. Happy. And then I just go ahead. I learned that trick from Brenda over at Rustic and Lace DIY. She spritz it down. And then when you have to, you know, clear off the devil's dust, which is glitter and on earth, um, it, the glitter doesn't go anywhere. So, yeah. Then I wipe it down. I had to sand it down a little bit because the words were still raised. And on that side, I had to do the paint, the coats of paint for, I think, four or five, just on the words. And, of course, I used my Apple Barrel Nutmeg Brown. Nutmeg Brown. Yeah. Right there, I was just going to go ahead and try to move it over, but some of it stuck to it anyways. And so I was like, well, this is where you're going to be at now. Yeah. But it turned out cute anyways. Um, I think it was pretty centered, and it was just like, don't mess me up. Yeah. So I take and put those uh, little handles back in. They were loose anyway, so they were very easy to get out. Just put some hot glue in there. And then I'm going to take two of those little gingerbread cutouts. Of course, I paint them in, you know, of course, Nutmeg Brown by Apple Barrel. It is a matte color. Just, you know, just so you guys know. And I paint both of them. I just only paint the uh, front because, you know, it's fine. It's fine. And then I blow them with the heat gun. Probably a little bit too much. I'm glad they didn't get scorched. <laughs> and I was going to paint them, but I was like, wait a minute. I got these acrylic markers from Timu as well. So I take the white paint marker and I just go around their little feet. And I think I had to do that three times. Three or four. I'm not sure. So that's number two. Number two right there. And then I wait for a little bit. And then I tried to make a bow on the girl's head. Did not work. Oh, no. I'm giving them faces right now. Yeah. So I take the black marker and I give them faces. And then here I am. Yeah. This is where I mess up and I tried to give her a bow on the head. Now it looks like just a blob on her head. But it, it's okay. It's fine. And then here that marker didn't work. So I have to figure out what's wrong with that one. But then that blue marker worked perfect. And he actually looks like a bow tie. And then there is... I think that's three on their feet. And then I just go ahead and use the colors that I use and, you know, give them, give them little buttons. And then I glue them to the shelf sitter. Oh, but wait, we're not done. Because, you know, we need to go extra. Oh, yeah. So then I go ahead and I also do the icing on there because that just gives it a little bit of, you know, oomph. A little bit of pizzazz. <laughs> and then oh yeah the peppermints from Timu as well I go ahead and put three on top right here I was going to put a ribbon on the little handles but I was like I don't know I don't want it too busy I think the peppermints on the top will be okay and then I was like and then I'm going to put those gingerbread men on top as well because the gingerbread men on top are the baking crew you know and they baked cookies way bigger than them that's crazy like I don't know why they would do that like, I guess trying to get in the Guinness Book of World Records of, you know. And right here I messed up. I used my Gorilla Glue to, you know, go down. So I was just like, oh my goodness, are you serious, Jess? Ugh. I kind of scoffed at myself a little bit for wasting Gorilla Glue. Yep. <laughs> I am my own worst critic. But then I go ahead and with my Waverly Chalk Paint in White, I go ahead and paint... All of the uh, icing on this one. And this one is about to come to an end. I am going to make you watch me paint. Yeah. And I had, to do two, I had to do two coats on it. Even on the fourth project, I had to do two coats. Because it kind of slipped through. And then they gave it that little extra, you know, brightness. Especially up against that brown. And so, yeah, I think this one is my favorite. I like this one. It'll go great in the kitchen because my gin my gingerbread goes in the kitchen. That's what we do. 
one lady said that her kitchen is all, you know, Mrs. Claus Bakery, and I kind of like that idea, too. So I just might have to, like, you know, piggyback off of that. <laughs> and then there is that. Let me know what you think. See the gingerbread cookies down there? That's the baking crew on top. Way bigger. The cookies are way bigger than the crew. Yep. And the little peppermints. Yeah, I think it's fine without bows on the sides. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And then here is the final review of everything. My two failures and my one okay and then my other ones that are like, woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do. I guess I'm just going to have to suck it up and get the uh, cookbook from Jennifer Maker on the... It's, it's the uh, sublimation cookbook. I think I'm just going to have to go ahead and get that, you know, because I don't want to ruin product. But, yeah, let me know what you think about this in the, the, or the comments down below. And if you have any ideas, if, you're, if you go out there and uh, do sublimation, let, let me know your time and temps. That will help me out a lot. Again, I want to thank Indiana Jones for hosting this amazing collaboration. Thank you so much, um, Annie. I appreciate it so much, and thank you for having me on this playlist. Remember to go look at her and all the people in the playlist. Everything will be in the description box below. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and for checking out my channel. Please subscribe. That helps me out a lot, and it shows YouTube that you are interested and you like what I'm putting out. And until I see you on the next one, God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Bye.